Gather round, boys and girls, it's story time. All right, now leave, boys and girls, because this story isn't age appropriate. All right, now remaining parents of the boys and girls who I just made leave, listen closely as I tell you the tale of Hooters Air. Hooters, for any viewers lucky enough to have never heard of it, is a chicken wing and misogyny themed restaurant chain that uses a 14th Amendment workaround to hire only female servers and requires them to wear tight shorts and tank tops as part of a business model known as, and I truly wish I were making this up, a restaurant. And in the early 2000s, Hooters thought to themselves, well, we've nailed buffalo sauce and sexism, so the next step is obvious start an airline. It was an idea so crazy that it just might completely fail. So, owner of Hooters Robert H. Brooks, whose name is coincidentally an anagram for R.B. Bork Hooters, started shopping around for an airline small enough and shameless enough that they wouldn't mind being rebranded as the restaurant's new hairline. After a failed attempt to purchase Vanguard, R.B. Bork Hooters stumbled upon a small, Winston-Salem-based charter airline called Pace, bought it, slapped a coat of orange and white paint on a bunch of the planes, and declared it Hooters Air. In order to market the airline heavily to golfers, Brooks moved the headquarters to the self-described golf capital of the world and the FBI-described property crime capital of the world, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, from where it ran its original two routes, Myrtle Beach to Atlanta and Myrtle Beach to Baltimore. Soon, though, Hooters Air decided more people deserved the opportunity to experience airborne objectification and expanded to over 15 destinations centered around Myrtle Beach, Rockford, Illinois, and Allentown, Pennsylvania, with destinations that included the Bahamas, Puerto Rico, and Las Vegas. The first planes were Boeing 737-200s, seating 114 passengers with a surprisingly generous 34 inches of legroom. Plenty of space for Hooters Air customers to store their personal items and repressed emotions. And the flights were surprisingly well priced, typically sitting at a flat $129. And now, I could keep on talking about the flight routes and pricing and seating charts, but let's be honest. You didn't click on a video called Hooters Air just for the logistics. You want to know how a restaurant best known for learning all the wrong lessons from third wave feminism managed to stuff their specific brand of timeless tastelessness into a metal tube in the sky. Contrary to popular belief, Hooters Air did not have their so-called Hooters girls serve as flight attendants. Flight attendants must be certified by the FAA, while Hooters restaurant servers are typically only certified by CD managers wearing t-shirts that say FBI female body inspector. So instead, flights had a traditional flight attendant crew wearing the standard flight attendant outfit. A navy pantsuit, a Hooters owl pin, and of course, an orange neckerchief just in case they needed to hop in the mystery machine to arrest old man Jenkins. Plus, Hooters Air didn't even serve Hooters wings, missing out on a world of potential marketing puns, instead opting to serve the sky's most famous snack, mediocre pretzels. So what made Hooters Air, you know, hooty? Hooter, hootersy? Ho hootery? Uh, you know what I'm saying. Well, apart from the word Hooters being written on the plane, the answer was the presence of two local Hooters waitresses on every flight who did trivia games, sang songs, and sold Hooters merchandise. Which, to be honest, feels pretty unfair, given that the last time I tried to sell Hooters merchandise on the plane I got tased by an air marshal. Apparently the Hooters girls were given essentially no training, so they seemingly just kind of did whatever to fill the time. So how did this seemingly flawless business plan fail? Well, the first problem seems to be that a number of planned routes fell through, including Myrtle Beach Las Vegas and an Oakland Honolulu route that Pace Airlines spent a year developing, getting as far as two successful test flights, but never actually managed to roll out. Plus, Hooters' Rockford Denver and Rockford Las Vegas flights, which at first had been a real boon for the company as they were guaranteed a profit through local airport authority subsidies, ended up being discontinued once it turned out that the same subsidy deal had been offered to a little airline called United. Another reason is that Hooters Air was launched in 2002, and unless you've forgotten that thing you're supposed to never forget, you'll know that 2002 was a pretty dicey time to start an airline as the public was still relatively afraid of flying. A third reason is that other discount airlines like Southwest and JetBlue showed up offering a much broader set of connections and destinations, plus the ability to market to a much broader audience of consumers who may want to take their kids on an airplane without having to pay for court-mandated therapy sessions about it later. The fourth is that oil prices started to spike, mostly in response to Hurricane Katrina decimating U.S. oil production in the Gulf of Mexico, which meant aviation fuel prices spiked, which meant that profit margins went down. Hooters Air tried to combat this by raising prices, but they soon 
discovered people weren't willing to pay all that much of a premium to ride on a plane with two Hooters waitresses and 100 guys that were the type of dude that would pay extra to ride on a plane with two Hooters waitresses. In the end, Hooters Air folded in 2006, citing a $40 million loss, although it doesn't seem to have done much to hurt the Hooters restaurant brand, which is still proudly tricking guys whose whole identity is that they used to be in a fraternity into eating mediocre chicken wings in 420 restaurants in 69 seats and countries, plus two more countries. When researching for this video, there was, you know, a lot that I did not want in my browser history. While I know how the clear history button works, I also know that internet service providers and governments can often see all your traffic, sell that data to ad companies, and even sometimes log it for years. That is unless, like me, you use ExpressVPN. They route all your internet traffic through a secure server somewhere in the world so that it can't be seen by anyone at all. This also helps keep you safe from hackers when using public Wi-Fi, like at hotels, airports, or college campuses, and allows you to use the internet as if you're in any one of the 94 different countries in which they have servers. The big advantage of this is that streaming sites like Netflix, Hulu, or even YouTube have different libraries in different countries, so an American, for example, could set their location to Australia to watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine on Netflix. All around, ExpressVPN is a crucial tool for anyone on the internet, and you can get three months free, plus help support HAI, by clicking this button or going to expressvpn.com slash HAI.